now, John. All right. So, uh, welcome, my triplets. We have Rich Bryant Wood, James Wood. We have Pascal Stussel, and myself, Brent Bruning. We Pascal and, and myself uh, represent the International Institute of Hand Analysis, which we consider is the leading authority on life prints and the blueprint of your life as being read through the hands. We are not fortune tellers. We are hand analysts and we are reverse engineering your architecture of your being by looking at your hands and being able to recognize that you are in a pattern. So we have prepared a, a showcase uh, and I believe it's going to be a historical event that never have we been able to have the wisdom and the knowledge of hand analysis with the research that's been done and have triplets at the same time. It's phenomenal, cool, and I welcome everybody. Let's, let's get started. So uh, I will share my screen. And we'll be working today uh, in these, this fun little diagram here. Do you see what I'm sharing? Yes. Yes, yes. All right. So uh, when you just look uh, at the hands in general, let's just take the 50,000 foot level and then we'll zone in. A little bit. Um, it's. It would be good if you can see that what what you're, what you're seeing here, is a, a showcase of three major lines that are developed at the time that you can move your body, which is the lifeline, and you get motor control around the nine week marker before you can bend your hands. And then you, the baby shows facial expressions at around 11 week marker. And you get this heart line that shows your emotionality. That's number two that you see there. And then uh, you have a, finally the headline, which is this area right there. It goes from here to there. And that headline is, the area of what, how long and how, how you think and how you go about thinking. How much information do you need? And of course, that is developed when your prefrontal and frontal cortex is developed and it spends the rest of its time during the pregnancy. Then you can bend your hands. Also interesting to note is I, in cartoon form at the top right, I have written your fingerprint patterns. They may be a little bit tough to see there, but we'll go into those and we'll be able to translate what those fingerprints mean and what you can see as a pattern for people who have these fingerprints. And the, the top row is your right hand. So when we're, we're seeing all these crazy little signals here, this that's just what I'm trying to draw what your fingerprint does. It just goes up and goes, hey, I love the party. Thank you very much. Goodbye. It's just a wave, right? Thumb, index, middle, ring, and pinky on the top. Thumb, index, middle, ring, and pinky on your left hand, right? And it's a nervous system. It's not a bunch of random wiring. So there's a system to this. We actually want to teach you a little bit of that system the way we see it. You have a sympathetic nervous system and you have a parasympathetic nervous system. You have the part that a baby tries to open a jar with his thumb and index finger, but it doesn't try to do it with his pinky and pinky, uh, a ring finger and the pinky. So that's the more relaxed or the captivated part of who you are. So your whole personality is represented in this architecture. So just looking at this, and looking at your fingerprints, what we have is a triplet group that's pretty loving, wouldn't you say there, Pascal? 
But it was pretty, pretty loving. What you said? Loving, yeah. Yeah, this is uh, where all three have in common in the fingerprints. We call this a school of love. And uh, all three have uh, also a very strong Morse mount. So the two observation, they are, uh, we call a delicious dilemma. Yeah, so let's back up and explain what Mars is. Back about 2,000 years ago, the Greeks were reading poems then, and they didn't think of it as weird. They, Aristotle was writing about it in his virtues and vices. And, and the Mars is the area where you're holding the hammer. And that is the part of, of your hand that you are having challenges and needing challenges. This is this area right here. Do you see this little area that I'm holding? Moving around? That's yeah. between the thumb and the index finger. And people with that love a have a provocative energy and they need to have a challenge if they don't have it they'll go find one yeah what else pascal yeah and uh, it's a dilemma why is that a dilemma that they have a mars area which is highly masculine area but they have a very loving side seen by the fingerprints with all these waves why is that a this dilemma this is all three of us have this same archetype yeah. Behavior. Okay. This is something like we we see that is similar for all three people. So uh, we can pick first what is similar and what can be different. But uh, uh, all three we call uh, actually warrior of love. So um, yeah, the the Mars has a strong uh, inclination of protecting and saving, and. Uh, so how can you protect and save today in 2023? So in the early time, you can protect uh, the, um, how we say that the princess and the fight the dragon. So uh, what kind of dragon can you fight today? And uh, all three are uh, yeah, a romantic side for the love. So, um, uh there is a inclination that uh, when you fall in love you fall in in love uh, with a princess that you try to protect and to rescue in their life mm -hmm. and uh so it's okay to do that but uh, mm -hmm. can you bring this also in a bigger picture and not just focus this in a relationship so uh, this is a, a challenge. How can I bring this out into the world and uh, saving and protecting the one who are in a kind of weak and need protection? Do you try to say something, Brent? Or? I'm not saying anything, no. There's just oh, okay. a, a weird... And, uh, so the dilemma is... Um, the Mars has a strong I want, is a strong I energy, I'm going through, and the loops has a strong adaptation and, and uh, makes the I want, um, yeah, enables the I want. So there is a, a interesting way uh, of when do I get strong and I push through, and when I uh, uh, step back and uh, go into an adaptation and uh, give up my I want. So mm -hmm. uh, how can I dance with that? And uh, especially in a relationship, uh, uh, it will be a challenge to, to find this balance. Mm. Uh, Pascal, what's the importance of us using our gifts that our hand shows us? Uh, well, one part, uh, yeah, it's for each one a little bit different. This is when we're going to check the life purpose. Mm. But uh, one part is, uh, like I said before, using the Mars uh, in, in this lifetime and Mars like I say, savior, savior, protector, or the Mars is also a pioneer. 
So mm -hmm. all of you three are the first one who jump into the jungle and uh, have to make the first steps. So uh, how can you have a purpose in this life where you can be pioneering something? Mm, okay. And the, pi the pioneering where all three have together is um, by um, how can I open up the heart of yourself and other people? But Mars people don't like to open their heart. They are the rumble, they are strong. But can be can I be strong and still have uh, having showing the the weak and the soft side? So uh, and uh, that's why it's one part in this purpose is um, yeah pioneering in a in an area where uh, where you can create compassion and connection and uh, and. Then it comes no other stuff, uh, but this is these are these two parts where uh, all these three are similar, and uh, the challenge is how to approach to the feeling part to the soft part because the Mars don't like to go there, mm -hmm. and that's the dilemma. The Mars don't like to go into the part where it's more soft, weak, the female side, and uh, showing tears. <laughs> And uh, so there is actually uh, like all three have Superman within, but you have also the crypto stone where mm. uh, when the stone comes. So when you when it comes in the emotional part, can you give up the control and oh, let it go? And James, this is this applies to you the most. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny because I felt very related to that what he was saying <laughs> because if just look at the the amount of meat that's in this area compared to this area right here right yeah so it's just like you swallowed a marble and you stuck it there yeah what pascal's alluding to is that within the personality we have different parts that are competing you're not made to just be aligned you have different regions that are all urging and competing within you for expression and what he's managed to hit upon immediately is a dilemma that you guys all have of wanting to have a challenge and protect and be very masculine in that but also be very feminine and it's a switching energy and it's a wrestling match within you that that it creates this tug of war where one part wants to go one direction and another part wants to go the other and he just combined it in a story that some people finally evolved to where they can, rather than just be the protector and then be the soft one, uh, they, he created this motivational pioneering world for each of you where you get to motivate other people and be warriors of love. And now we just have to look at what would be suitable jobs for that right but just hang into that topic and recognize that the whole everything that you see every single line that you see here is begging for expression and this is a big one for you guys the other thing that i would say pascal is is look how their pinkies are extraordinarily tall they're code breakers and quite witty little uh uh or, or very quick thinking and very strategic, all of them are very good at linking many ideas. So when you organize people like I have 20,000 hands on my computer, and that's what I love to do on Friday nights is organize people by big pinkies. And what you'll see emerge out of that is uh, that these are the most clever group in this particular tribe. So we're taking the warrior tribe here and now we're seeing these are the clever ones. So they need to link ideas all the time and be constantly mm -hmm. interested in novelty, constantly interested in uh, and connecting the dots. Now, if you, you put that together with somebody who's a champion, then you have a great, very strong urge for uh, being an advisor and helping other people in whatever mm -hmm. capacity you're doing and consulting them to bring, to push them 
and to be a coach for them and to push them and then also be interested in what you're learning in the process and be constantly learning because this is a great appetite for that. That's also one thing I can say. And it helps for debates. You have to debate and uh, be an advocate for, for someone that you can make you strong through words for something that is close to your heart and uh, and the challenge but for for a long pinky is uh, then uh, like having not the head up in the sky and coming down also to the deep waters and not having too many excuses why avoiding the deep waters and give us an example of deep waters uh yeah well uh when uh, something happens between two person that uh, the Mercury, the long pinky uh, tries to escape with excuses and talk around. And uh, instead of admitting and say, yes, um, uh, it hurts me, I'm sad about it. And uh, you write. So it's uh, when it's not hiding behind words and letting the the thing happens what comes from the emotional part in other words just being authentically talking about your shadow going up upset and i'm feeling guilty or frustrated or whatever and you just be open about that and just let the emotion be which has been Got a big it. tricky issue for many people mm -hmm, for sure and, and yeah. in the area of strategy and cleverness, uh, if you just look at the pinkies of the of these triplets, we see Bryant being really, really into this the most, right? Really wanting to connect all the different ideas, really be in the forefront of the three of you in terms of wanting to, you know, speak and learn and connect many different ideas. That's a think of it as an antenna. And he's got a big one there. What is important in life is uh, to recognize inside you these different driving forces and to distinguish these different driving forces that live within and, uh, and see, okay, now I'm in this kind of space or this kind of space. And uh, the long mercury has a, a tendency to... Yet it's like a little boy uh, when you catch him by stealing uh, the apple uh, and someone finds him and they say, no, I didn't, I wasn't it, uh, someone else did it. So it's kind of a little boy, uh, this pinky who, who we can't catch them. And, and so the challenge is that you catch yourself by doing this. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's it's the constant observation, like when you drive car, you know you in which gear you are, you know uh, on which street you are. It's a constant driving force within you, and to catch yourself by by seeing what you are doing in the moment. Got it. Uh, and that's the main thing. What 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 needs to do by by uh, when you read hands and when you are conscious about this driving force within you. Um, question, from, from your guys' experience, um, do you ever read, read spouses' hands like together? All the time, yeah. yeah. So I'm curious from what you've seen, our hands together, um, what kind of dynamic should we look out for as brothers that we'd have to work through together? Well, first off, when you have a, a sensitivity that you have what you have that much more oxytocin that you need yeah we're very sensitive james and i specifically yeah I would say more. and and that that because of all the waves if you have six or more of these uh waves on the fingerprints then we need to talk about your sensitivity and you guys have arguably <laughs> eight each right so uh we're in a love story, whether you like it or not, you're in a love story. And the problem with people with that much sensitivity is that they, they must go through a particular evolutionary path. I talk about this book, I would like to read this because this is so 
important for you guys. I might as well read this little paragraph so you get you get the 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 sense of of how much love you have. So when you organize people by fingerprint pattern, you're it's the same thing like organize uh, different types of pedigrees of animals. If you have a bunch of circles all over the place, these guys have a, a great urge for mission and service and devotion and to be used and to be the answer for everything, right? So they, if you just look at these guys on their face, they don't have waves on their fingers like you guys. They're just wanting to be the answer for everything, okay? I want to show you what you're not so you can get what you are. So I've read Tony Robbins' hands twice now. And this guy is not in a love story. You might have a love story, but his thing is about being, building this motivational empire. If you look at these guys, not in a love story, right? And he's a Marshall Mathers, a really nice guy, but he's they have Eminem. a little bit more need for uh, distance. Eminem is that who Marshall Mathers yeah. is? Yeah. Amazing. because he has a different fingerprint pattern and if you look at these guys they're a little bit imbalanced right not in a love story now just all i'm doing is i'm taking the same four hand types and i'm just rotating a different set of fingerprints on it right all these guys have a little bit more fear in their body right and they're a little bit edgy but look at what happens to these guys and i'm not cherry picking i'm just saying take a Someone who's with a very feminine hand and intellectual, just look at how much love, how loving they are. Now, I'll read this and see if this has anything to do with you. Owners with six or more loops are in a love story of pleasure and closeness. Biochemically, this is oxytocin and serotonin. Intimacy and touch is their rocket fuel. And they easily get emotionally invested. These are angels and people pleasers. The quality of their relationships, feeling appreciated and self-esteem is the quality of life. They put their heart in everything and they need soulmates, not girlfriends. They need soulmates who Wait, appreciate hold this. Hold on, we say that again? They hold don't on. need, they put their heart in everything and they don't need girlfriends. They need soulmates. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why is that? Just to be clear. Because of the need for touch and connection. Mm. And when you what? don't have it, it's, it's, it starts to create a disruption in your body that I'm about to explain here. And the mm. outcome of that can be really difficult. Uh, histamine, adrenaline, and your body starts may, may even have breakdowns. Okay? Mm. So... Even small amount of rejection, if you're this sensitive and you need six to be at this card table, remember, you guys have eight. So even yeah. small amounts of rejection can be upsetting. And with the sensitivity toward abandonment, they can be mm -hmm. codependent on others to keep the trust. Just be, hey, no, and it's okay. Or frozen in distrust. Ah, it's fine. All right? And then, as Pascal was saying, you know, it's easy to not catch yourself. Or just say, hey, look, you know, this is what's so for me. Instead, but the very this gets more challenging because you got this really witty pinky of yours. Mm -hmm. And this is going to get even more challenging because people with a long pinky that are as witty as you guys can't have a girlfriend that isn't witty. Mm -hmm. What's so what's the so codependent? How do you feel about codependency? Yeah, so the, the codependent is because they get locked into a relationship trying to make the other person feel good obviously so that they can feel good and if they're and with that sensitivity that you guys have and if somebody's in a bad mood in the house you really feel it and i can imagine what that would might have been like with three brothers who are really sensitive and one of them is is elbowing the other right Oh my God! We're Power struggles that might have happened there as you guys you could got into an emotional turbulence. So, um, yeah. So as far as soulmates, like I, let's say I found a soulmate, but then it begins to feel codependent. What's the best way to navigate that? All right, that's this next paragraph. So you have to fir first realize that you're bottling up the emotion, 
mm -hmm. you're putting a pressure on yourself to deny how you feel. You're saying, I'm fine. And when you do that, you're detaching from your own nervous system. Mm. That creates a detachment. And then you start building a story from that place in the same way that you build a story if you're stuck in traffic and you're angry and that just you're just telling that story. Here, you're telling mm. this story of detachment. So the common statements are, we can't connect any emotionally anymore. I'm lonely, I'm withheld. I can't trust anyone because they let me down. So mm. when you understand that and you've put it to a big board, like I was suggesting, the, you get a breakthrough. So that means you break the ice and you talk about the elephant in the living room. Mm -hmm. You're going, hey, you connect to the motion that is so scary and go, look, this is really scary for me, but I gotta tell you. And you do it with compassion. And you, that restores the trust. And then they're back having a happy life. So the mm -hmm. resolution with this particular truck is to be really great at growing up and having a crucial conversation with people and dealing mm -hmm. with conflict that restores visibility and compassion and having a generous forgiving interpretation of what happened and going, it's fine. Let's just get back to where we were and restore. So that means that if you're in a, a codependent relationship, you need to be able to set really good boundaries. And each of you have a different way in which you screw up in this area that we're going to go into a little bit. Amazing. Okay. And this, and think of it, this is when your soul comes into your body. So you're meant to do this, by the way, you're meant to go through this pain. And if you look at your high school reunion, you'll see that some people grew up. And other people did not. And some people are telling the same story and dealing with the same issues in the same way. And other people have light speed beyond that. This is how they break through. And this is what I've observed is the biggest breakthrough is authenticity, becoming masterful with your emotions, which means that you guys here, it's at least on a soul level, are all to become masters of love. Mm. All of you. Mm which sounds all airy fairy, but if you just look at it and just look at the pictures that I showed you, those other guys aren't. They, they call me Don Juan. <laughs> yeah. And that's a good reason for that because of that great area of the Venus region, which is right below Mars, which has a lot of sexuality energy too. And you guys mm -hmm. all have a really nice area in this area that wraps around the lifeline and that's animal magnetism. And that makes you really charming people. Add that to what looks to be uh, really nice ring fingers and a circle on the ring finger as well uh, that brings out a lot more of that creative energy. Is anybody noticing that James is wearing a ring on his hand reading photo? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that means something too. Interesting. There's ring psychology. Yeah, that's interesting. And he's cleaning out the basement, trying to reestablish his worth about something. Mm, so, deep. So um, anything else you see from, from a, a, a higher perspective before we go down the rabbit hole together? There, Pascal? Well, I think... Uh... James is the middle one, and right, and uh, on the left one is uh, Richard. Is Richard? Yeah. Okay. What I see in these two hands, uh, uh, a little bit too strong and extremely, is yeah the long connection between the head and the lifeline. Yeah. So if it's a really long connection. Right there. Yeah. Do you see what we want you to see is this line right here. And that's a really strong connection to the mother because that's when that this was developed. Oh. Very strong. For James? Yes, for James and for, for Richard. And that's a deep devotional energy, even obligation, especially for Richard, obligation energy. Uh, oh that uh, is deep within his physiologically. I mean, your mom is your body at first. And, and there's a deep, deep interwoven or what you would call co-regulation. I guess you know that one, Brian. And, and 
where you, when you don't feel good, who you go to somebody who can help you feel better. And people with this have a real strong sense of uh, group consciousness and being able to see uh, the expectations and also try to meet the expectations of the family. How would you say it, Pascal? Yes, and uh, to be conscious that that uh, to who it can be the mother, can be the father or the grandfather, uh, that uh, you had a really strong focus and and uh, get into the world view of this person and um, having this also in your own program and uh, and the question is uh, is this really your thinking your worldview or uh, do you take this just for granted that it's true what this person are saying so it's uh, to reflecting the thinking that you got maybe from the outer world maybe mostly through someone from a family and uh, and it might be right it might be not right it might fit you it might not fit you what is important is to reflect it and not just stay stick in this in this uh, tunnel of thinking and not open up uh, the the view or to, to go to another perspective. So it can make uh, stick too long in a stubbornness or in a kind of uh, stand in the world, how it is, you say it is red, but it can be also blue. So uh, uh, it's, it's, um, it's important to, to recognize that, that uh, for what you can use this kind of uh, tunnel thinking that you say, okay, I want to save the world, I want to save the dolphin, whatever that's important, so that you have also a kind of a mission that you can use your thinking that is for we, for a group, and uh, do something good about it, but also to be uh, conscious that you not get fanatic of something and say, okay, I let it go. It can be also done in a different way. So it's yeah. a kind of, of a brain that fixed to something that bites into something. Is this James that you're talking about? James Richard. and uh, and Richard strongly, both. Got it. These Makes are the, the strongest. You have as well a bit, but James and, and Richard have this issue, I think more or less similar. Yeah, Brian, you kind of broke away there. So uh, it's a little bit like, think of it as tribal loyalty, right? Mm -hmm. And there was a, a almost a rebelliousness that you can see from your side there as you kind of went around uh, in uh, circles there to try to break away in order to establish your independent thinking. Whereas uh, you have uh, James and Richard standing uh, tall and, uh, and, and by the family and what the family would most expect from them. Okay. And it's not only family, it's just what, what you take in from the outside and that you see it as that it's true and it is like that. And to, can I make my, can I make my mind up maybe to another perspective, to another uh, point of view, not like, uh, well, like uh, palm reading is, is just nonsense and it is like this and and uh, and that's it point and to allow yourself to make the experience first and then to see oh it's it's maybe it's, it has something it's interesting so not to make your mind up too quick for something and uh, to be just um, cautious about that and this is just I wanted to bring up that is a little bit different uh, of uh, of these three two of these three guys that Rich and same are more similar and Brian is there a little bit different it can be a little bit prejudiced or uh, in your thinking and if, if to give you an example if somebody had a headline and a lifeline that was separated in other mm -hmm. words uh, there you, sometimes you even see a half inch apart like somebody like Jody Foster right who's just super independent thinking 
right? She's too odd, uh, and she doesn't want to depend on anyone else for her opinion. She doesn't go for anyone for her opinion. Here, we're loyal to that opinion. Well, because um, Richard and James, would you guys be considered identical if you shared the same egg or no? Um, I'm not quite sure they ever did like a test on that, but I mean, we look yeah. pretty similar, so maybe so. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure either, but um, the, the thing that... is, I, I I read online, Brian, that it's more common for two to look alike and one not to be than all three to look alike or all three not to look alike, because basically it's two eggs and one splits. Yeah, yeah, so that's what I've okay. read at least. Yeah, I think the same here. So. Um, so my question is, would the fact that because they their egg split, would that have a role in how their hands manifested throughout their lives? No clue. I have no idea how how that might. Uh, I haven't done enough twin research to recognize how that. But certainly, we see a lot of commonalities between them. Okay. Uh, what is also the shape? of uh, James and Richard is as a far as I see it's more uh, fire earth and uh, with Brian is more airy hmm. so uh, Brian is for sure the most mental guy of all these three so what he's seeing is a, he, he's taking uh, different people uh, if you just look at maybe four main hand shapes you'll see that some people have a really down to earth hand type that is real square and they just belong in nature and they're very accepting. And I'm sure you have friends like this. So just solid and a woman can have it, right? Just practical. You go outside of the city, you're going to find a lot of these. And then you have other people like Snoop Dogg have these crazy uh, short fingers and they have a much more impulsive nature. We call that fire. And they have some crazy lines and they don't bend their hands more than a farmer. They just more neurotic. They need more stimulation. Finally, you have intellectuals here. They have long fingers, long palm, like what he's alluding that Bryant has. And then some men and a lot of women have very slender hands, but they're very feminine. So put that together. And what Pascal is saying is that when you put fire and earth together, then what you're going is to an archetype energy, fire earth, which is a very powerful energy that you see even on uh, poetically and the way that you see it in, in, in uh, on earth, powerful. So mm -hmm. you say, yeah, we got some very powerful people. And if your hands got any wider, you would be in Donald Trump uh, territory. So- <laughs> This is, these people, when you organize by short fingers and broad palms, are living a slightly different story of wanting to be unstoppable, and they carry the world on their story uh, on their on their shoulders. They hate the word cannot, and they even love challenges even more. Now add that to the heroic side that you have, and we have champions here. Make sense. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Where yeah, we have is, a little bit more of the intellect and softness side from Bryant. This is fascinating, by the way. Um, is this is this resonating to you guys, Richard James, at all? Like as far as some of the stuff he's saying? Yeah, I mean, so far it's it's been yeah, pretty pretty on point, pretty accurate. You can say more testosterone for the for uh Richard and uh James a little bit more. Uh, they're both locomotive. They they go for it and they need the challenge and also physically and uh, it it goes again also to this pioneer and to have a creative way of uh, of creating life also in a material way to like I build my own house and uh, I need something always to to do with my hands. And uh, yeah, and having a creative and physical challenge. Yeah, um, I'm sure uh, you guys beat each other up, right? So there's got to, there needs to, there, there's a need for that to just kind of wrestle around, you know, and, you know, just 
have this expression out of, you know, to box and to, to, you know, be a champion there. It's a good feeling. It feels good to beat each other to submission. <laughs> yeah, and to have a, to need to have a, a goal, like having a, a mountain and I need to get up on this mountain. So fire and earth and with Mars, they are really good in athletic, in sport, whatever. And they need to have uh, this physical challenge. And, uh, and it's important on this track, yeah, like getting back to not to detach from the feeling parts. So uh, when you get in with the feeling, so you have maybe then a good feeling in the body that you have a good feeling to hold the ball in the hands or a good feeling with the body by moving it. So uh, not being stiff with the body and having uh, or making or being on the skateboard or whatever. It's just having a good feeling to connect with the instrument that you use, for example, for a sport. And, uh, and yeah, to be to become one with with your movement or with this, what you are connecting, like having the tennis racket in the hand and the tennis racket and the body becomes one. So it's a nice feeling in the body to, to come to, to come into this flow, uh, the flow feeling. So love needs to have this flow feeling. I'm, I'm like like a surfer. And I flow and I just feel happy and I forget the day and connect this with a with a phys uh, physical challenge where all three have that because all three have a good Mars. But uh, James and Richard um, have a, a lot, have a more, you know, the adventurous part within themselves, a little bit stronger as Brian. Hey, Brian is he's the, he's the professor of yeah. all of, of these three. <laughs> It's fascinating. I mean, you know, we have such an interesting scenario growing up because being a triplet kind of, I always say when I do interviews, I'm like, they were a huge catalyst for me to be more of myself. Um, you know, because there's, there's like in the psychology of triplets, there's kind of the one that speaks up all the time, you know, um, and Richard and James, feel free to disagree with me if, 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 you, if you don't um, agree, but it's like, I think early age, I kind of took the role of like speaking up more. And it's interesting to see if that's showing in the palms. Yeah, that's that pinky of yours. That's the tallest, right? And that's the area of communication strategy and making connections. Yeah, and actually most is the tenor dodge on left side and he's the professor, yeah, the teacher, that. but we're going to go later to that. But he's the Mr. Wisdom. Yeah. And so he has to be also a little bit to watch out to not to to teach his two brothers too much and let them know what they have to do and give them too much advices without asking them. So yes. on this part, you can get uh, maybe sometimes a little bit can be um, uh, as Mr. Knowing all. And, uh, and so there is a part that you have that you have to be aware of it. And is that, and is that because they don't respond well to that? Because not just because you're, you're, you're built differently. Yeah. You, have a, you have a different pattern within you. Mm -hmm. That makes uh, sense. When I, in my early 20s, I remember I, I kind of, quote unquote, had a spiritual awakening, I would say. And I went home and I like my first thing I wanted to do was like share with them kind of what I learned. And I realized that it wasn't necessarily resonating with them to try to tell them things that I went through. So now after, after that year, I always try to just like be with them as they are instead of just trying to trying to teach it all you know i just yeah. want to be there like that's my main goal and i feel that we've gotten way closer since us really focusing on just building a friendship and loving each other regardless of whatever's going on in our lives exactly because this is this is the point when you get too much the the knowing all and the, the teacher uh, there you can uh, overwhelm you two brothers and then you can they then they don't feel uh, uh then too much connected with you because they just made a little bit on a different uh, pattern. And so it's important that uh, you keep the, the Mr. Wisdom within you in your profession, mm -hmm. be there, but in the family, just be Brian, the brother. And when they want to know something, tell them when they, 
when they come up to you and they have a question. But otherwise, it's a challenge for you to, uh, yeah, to to keep your mouth <laughs> in one way. Just shut up. Just shut up. <laughs> even if you come, even if you come with good intention. It's yeah, good like intention. I love you so much. Like, yeah. Yeah, and you, it's difficult for you to because you see a lot from outside, and you would like to give them nice advices, and uh, because you love them, it's your brothers. And uh, so uh, it can be maybe sometimes too much. Mm. And even if there is good attention, but good attention is not always productive. Yeah. So I, I'm super curious because all three of us, as much as we're very, very similar, um, we have a lot of similarities. There's also very distinct differences. So sure. One second. There's yeah. very distinct differences. And I'm not going to tell you what they are, but I'm curious to see if it comes up during the reading. Sure. Uh, I'm just making one little correction as I was looking through. Uh, I wanted to highlight one other thing here. Uh, I'm going to put this a little bit here because that's it. Sorry, Pascal. I, I saw that this one is not quite there. It's more like that. Just to, I'm a perfectionist. Um, the, the other thing that we see is that you say that uh, uh, James and, and, and Richard shared the same egg and you were a different egg in the same womb, right, Brian? Yes. Okay, so when we say that the soul comes into the body around nine weeks as a, a fetus, what it does is it creates an imprint that says, for the love of God, I want to uh, do something uh, in this life in a particular region. And as, as you're starting to get the notion, the hand is the complete blueprint of life. Mm -hmm. and, and if it loves it, if it says, oh my God, I love it, then you get what is uh, a, called a, a volar pad. I'll show you example here. And what's happening is the pineal gland the, in the limbic system is releasing serotonin and dopamine and it's expanding out like an erection to this water balloon of a hand mm. you don't have muscle or tendons here to be able to bend your hands just this big ball and it stays for four months now this example that you see here is very similar to richard and james they got an erection for whatever that energy is on the ring finger they're like for the love of god make it my life Whoa. And it stays like that for four months in the, in the fetus for both of them. When the soul comes into the body at nine weeks and they had a very similar soul it comes in right in. And eventually you get a, a topographical map of that ball. Like, uh, like you have in army maps, right? If it's a big ball, then you're going to get a circle there. Right. And you can see that right here. That's a that's a big ball for somebody. That means I must have that energy. I must have it. If it's maybe it's they just love it like you guys. So you have a lot of love. Maybe they're a little bit anxious about it and they want to learn about it. Like we're going to talk about your professor side. OK. And maybe it's just whatever. And, and what's the What's the energy that they have to have that they're called towards? So where that circle is shows us where they want to go. And both of them had a circle on both ring fingers that said, I must do something creative with appreciation mm. and do something innovative. And it's got to look good. It's got to be have a branding side of it. It's got to look really uh, like sparkle the mind and be astonishing. So if it was just on the right circle, and you just organize all the people with circles on the right ring finger, you'd have all the artists and all the famous people and, and most famous people do. But you guys have a double shot, like I saw in TEDx when I was reading everyone's hands at TEDx. You would think if that was my only sample size, then everyone must have a circle on their left ring. No, only the innovative people. So there's a strong urge to develop when you have a circle and there's inner applause and outer applause, a need for creativity and appreciation and acceptance. And that imagine now putting that together for somebody who's so loving 
with a strong need for that level of acceptance with now a devotion to the family and a strong sense of creativity. You got two peas in a pod here. And they, and then you can also see uh, anything you want to say about that, Pascal? I know you you have a good way of just explaining that uh, those double circles. Well, you did it well. Uh, it's just um, and creativity is not only singing, dancing, and painting. It's uh, having uh, having something where you just have uh, pleasure that you have yet that you can identify yourself. So it's a, it's a part of identification, and this identification has to connect with the with the hard part and so the challenge is the more you can identificate yourself with something you highly sensitive of critics of criticism so uh, uh, that's the challenge to to make you seen out in the world to be picturing your picture out in the world the authentic part of expressing the 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 soft part of you and uh, making people through your being um, in a way of uh, having a good time. So people, you like to make people in one way happy and to make them feel good. So how you make them feel good, that's the, uh, the, the, the way uh it's it's open there are, there are different shapes of of it so it's but it's important that you use your mars that we are talking before or the locomotive and this is one part of the expressive uh, quality that you have to to shine into the world so uh yeah being being a, a sun and uh, having a strong identification say this is who i am and I don't want to change. And even people give you um, a booze or whatever, stick on it and be honest to yourself. And doesn't matter if you have 10 people who like you or 1 million who likes you. And uh, so it's important that you keep on going what you like and not just going the path where, where other people like. So being... Uh, being um, true to yourself it's 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 not always easy because uh, yeah maybe you can make one million because you sing this song but it's not your song and you don't feel good in this song but you make then you have got a lot of appreciation and then you get you you start to lose yourself you to connection to yourself so it's important to stick also at your song that you want to sing but maybe you don't get as much as money but at the end, you win more when you stick on at the song that you want to sing, and not please the everybody around you. Yeah, so it's like loving the idea of something. That this is a link to the optical center, uh, and it's and so there's a strong amount of imagery that you're able to work with both of you, and to also you know live up to a self image, and that is gets kind of one that is that you you've been handed down with a lot of that and really being able to um be authentic to your creativity and you both are entrepreneurs when you put this together people that are really have a strong sense of creativity and innovation who have powerful hands love a challenge and want to work with a team with group expectations and clever and now you can see the other the last piece that I wanted to say is look at this crooked index finger. You, it's like you guys all got had an index finger that got I had a rocking chair go right over it. So that's area that that does the, the index finger is the area of directing and power. But when oh. it, when you get an area that's bent, you can't purposely or consciously move your index finger in this direction so this is a struggle energy inside you and this has been conditioned in you to see life as a struggle and you got to power through that and then when this becomes uh, even more of a challenge given that you're in a love story hmm? 
who needs authentic connection, who's loving the idea of love and what it should look like, (laughs) who's in a power struggle. And, and, and that is especially hard of a topic when I look at James, who has a compression here of struggling and wrestling with anger. Can you do it? And not really, how do you handle your anger? And how do you express it? Because there's a compression on your right index finger saying, who am I to be an authority here? I feel like I can't be a big ego. If I do, you guys are going to cane me. So Mm -hmm. there's a strong anti-egoism. And that's also detaching from his own anger, which makes it even harder when he has a crucial conversation to talk about the elephant, to talk about his anger. Right? Yeah, James, are you hearing this? I am, I am, and I'm definitely resonating with it. Um, I'm definitely curious um, about more so on the anger as far as the control aspect. Does it say anything about, or what, as far as advise, advising controlling it, what do you suggest? Is there anything there? Yeah, get angry. Yes. <laughs> yes. Told you. All right, I love that. Yeah, so what happens is there is a epigenetic history of you comp- uh, of uh, compressing this in order to meet your expectations, you know? And that makes you nice, but it doesn't make you great. And you're pre- compressing your uh, spirit. Your spirit wants to break through, but if you're being nice and setting expectations, then you're, you can't, that makes it harder for you to really engage. And I, I, I like the word engage rather than confront, right? I want you to engage with the problem rather than confront it and have a confrontation or avoid it. And here we, you see more of an avoidance pattern until it all builds up and then you just explode with this type of combination or get it out through your body and just, rah. but if you can really express and allow yourself to be angry, then physiologically you start to see somebody's spirit comes out and they look way more alpha, more powerful, and they have much more energy. This is a, at least a, a tenth of your nervous system that's traditionally shut down in this department. For Richard, it's the same thing. You have both have this twist in Jupiter, in the index finger, as, as far as I can see. Oh, you think he has the same fingerprint combination? No, you were talking about the, the twisted Jupiter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They all have a little bit of twisted, but these guys, yeah. these two have it the most. Richard as, as well. So it's, it's the same thing what you what you're talking that takes that goes for both person for James and Richard. Yeah. So they need to beat each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I feel like I'm a uh, slightly different in that aspect. Uh, I've never really struggled with anger. It's it's pretty rare that. I do get angry um, and I, I don't think I'm like suppressing it in any kind of way um, to my benefit, at least, or what I think is a benefit. So, um, yeah, I don't know if that pertains to me as much as, uh, as James. I, I agree with you because I think uh, with James, uh, what's happening here is a more on an emotional level on the fingerprint side, where in the index finger, uh, there is a uh the the compression here says who am i to be an ego right and there's that and that is a wrestling match with that but and general, i'll be right back i'm gonna head to the bathroom but please continue on yeah right. so why don't we why don't we dive now into um the fingerprint pattern of uh richard all right yeah, guys, this is where it gets awesome. Love this aspect of it. So in addition to having these this ring finger here uh, with these circles and definitely more uh, exp- ex- ex- uh, expansion on the right ring finger, there's an S, a composite, who is what we call like Superman an S formation on the left middle finger. And this is a switching energy. It it comes and it goes. It's a moody energy. And and this is the area of uh, security as well as insecurity. 
and it moves into I am the mentor and I'm feeling good. Now I'm feeling bad. I'm feeling a sense of uh, being able to hold my value for a while and then not being able to hold it and feeling guilty for no reason and having a, 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 a bad conscience. And it's a switching energy. So when you have that, that means that you can have you, you have a strong, the, the protection and the nursing energy and the need to rescue other people. Uh, this, this urge to, to, uh, to, to, to work with helping and rescuing other people while you're wrestling with yourself. I'm bad. No, I'm good. Uh, what am I, a pussy? What am I? You know, and, and I got to, uh, I got to uh, work on myself and fix myself. I'm a good husband. Now I'm having guilty. And so, there's a lot of swings here. And, and that, that's just a wrestling match that you can see that says, okay, how, uh, and it's something that you're, you're born to have. Uh, and that really gets rest into a wrestling match when you lose your connection and you start to go in detaching from your relationship. And then you get into a really bad conscience. So it's a, it's an area of sometimes uh, I've seen people with uh, uh, even raising and panic attacks sometimes or a fear of fear. And, and then the things are provoking or triggering uh, a sense of rejection and you have a high sensitivity for that. And then you're okay. It has also comes with it a fear of death. Uh, and uh, or sometimes being all alone, having to carry everyone's cross, everyone's problems. And I am the one that has to be the rescuer here. So it's a lot of, I've got to bring and hold the, the answer, the security, and it's up to me to be Mr. Security. And then it comes and goes. And a lot of it has to do with the quality of your relationship that can trigger that thing into a nice moody place. Pascal? Yeah, I agree what you said. And, uh, and first, uh, what, uh, yeah, it's, um, it's important that, that you really can also make the decision of, of the values in your life. And uh, it's one central part that you can build your life on your values and uh, and not change them or or be not conscious about the values so um, and this is creates then also the self-worth the self-acceptance of you more when you make a decision okay this is important for me and i stick on this what is important for me and uh, this needs to be connected with the hard part. And when it's disconnected with the hard part, then what is important for you, the value becomes unstable and weak. And this is like a, a fundament, a uh, basic, uh, that it's important to, to be conscious about it, to, to evolve into the, into the person that we were talking before, being a person like yeah, being a person in the limelight and being seen. So for what value you want to be seen, what is really important? And this is important to reflect and, uh, and making your decision and stick on it and not changing it too, too much. Think of it as that there's a lot of right and wrong in this. It puts the extreme of your conscience to, to polarize the way that you look at things and a lot of right and wrong. And okay, hey, I'm, I'm wrong here, or this is wrong, or this is right. And when you have such an extreme hammer there, it, 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 it can be brutal sometimes feeling that. And that, that switching energy uh, says damn i gotta work freaking hard on myself you know and and then and then you just get a little bit more uh it, it's like you have a mother inside you that won't shut up right you got a conscience and and that 
is that disappears is what what Pascal is saying a lot when you can just hold to your value and just hold to your acceptance and go this is this is I feel good about this and I'm going to stick to it but because we see in the heart line here a a wrestling nature of obligation as it dips down here this is extreme loyalty to the family and this is what we call uh, a uh, a line of obligation a d fork and it shows a lot of emotionality and then ah i'd love to be up here i'd love to do this i'd love i'd love to i'm super caring i'm connected and sweetheart but damn i gotta be here damn i gotta do this for the job i would love oh brian it's amazing you have a great life but you know good for you okay because of what i've got to go through and the cross i have to carry and mm. and so good for you right so there's a lot of this i'm going to take a hit for the team right here and it's mm. and it doesn't feel good i mean he, 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 there's a self-sacrificing nature when you have that he's willing to sacrifice himself for the team right which we already established through this obligation energy and even if it doesn't feel good so mm. it you know, you're dealing with, um, sometimes I have people that with that combination that rob or drug, uh, are drug traffickers, right? And they're just like, it's totally bad, right? But they're dealing with themselves and their values of like, screw off, I'm not going to follow the rules and all of that. So they're rebelling. And then they finally find their value and they're the best mentor. Uh, mm -hmm. If you've seen the, 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 um, the movie heat right these guys sitting at the dinner table and they're all really cool bank robbers and loving people and it's just like i'm bad and no i'm good i'm bad and i'm good right and so there's this wrestle match there so this is what this is just what your soul feels like and that came through a deep devotion to your family mm -hmm. and that happened quite early on um just double checking uh does that how does that land for you rich um yeah i mean a lot of that does resonate with me uh the position of like bad and good and how i kind of view myself is i i never really try to beat myself up too much even though we all you know say and make our mistakes of course i know i've done wrong but i never really try and harp on it or really battle with it i just try to learn from it and you know apply it in a better a situation in the future right but with what you're saying about maybe relationships have a big effect on my emotions and how i um, react that that's pretty accurate it does kind of change my mood um which is i feel like natural but uh, i never kind of stray away from my morals and and my my positive energy that i really try to have often but uh, yeah, I mean, for the most part, that was that was really good. So maybe we could be a little bit softer on this this conscience energy. I would say you nailed the fact that he's super loyal to the family, though. Oh yeah, you know, yeah. for sure. I would say he has like a a way of bringing us all closer together, and you know, he he, he like reaches out often, and and um, you know, make sure that we're all connected. So, hmm. for sure. Also, his lifeline that splits here, right? So this is a very strong, restless nature. Uh, it's called the traveler's uh, a traveler's foot. And so it's like one part wants to be in one country and another part wants to be in another country. He for and, sure has that. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's not surprising when I'm reading this that I see a lot of expats with this um, and uh, people who have a... a a feeling like, hey, I'm okay being in the city, but while I'm here, I'm counting the days before I can go. And then when they're there, they're counting the days to come back and can't wait to get home. So it's a big push and pull energy in their body, that we, like having ants in their pants, like, come on, let's go, let's go, right? So that creates even more energy for him in his body. Now he needs even more football and more uh, to get some of that out for him to feel grounded. Interesting. Yeah, that's that's pretty pretty right on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
So if now the magic is in the combination, right? When, when you take all of this together, right? You take somebody who's got a strong creative nature, who's a deeply devoted to the family, who's been devoted to the family, who's got a restless nature. Now you already start to see a, a bit of a dilemma in him. Should I stay or should I go? And, mm -hmm. and, and where, and he's wrestling with that. And he's, you know, wrestling also with the expectations of the group and uh, going, Hey, I should be for you guys. So there's a dilemma of, should I be for you or should I go for me? Mm -hmm. And, and that's going to be there for a while, Richie. And, and, uh, and there's a, there's this champion energy that always need to have that challenge. So even if it's, if it's, it's got to be ultimately like strong business deals and breaking through and transformative work where you're transforming the world and moving mountains with this type of combination, mm, not just people in an interpersonal level, but moving the businesses and breaking through and the big business deals would really help you with that mm. combination. Uh, Pascal, do you have more to say here? No, that's fine. You sum up it really well. It's good. And, and to be also then conscious that at the end, he has the mentor as well. So uh, mm -hmm. that, uh, that uh, you one day that you come in a position where you like to share your experience with your younger people and, uh, and mm -hmm. tell them uh, how to do it. So there's, uh, it's like the, the father who shows his son how to use uh, the, how to make artwork or whatever. So there is also uh, uh, to admit within you that you have a, a teacher within you and you like to share the experience where you're good at and where, you, and also to share the, the value, uh, how to treat other people. And uh, so uh, how can you bring this into your daily life as in the work as well. So this is a life purpose for you to, to be one time in the position where, um, where people say, well, I learned this from, from you. Uh, he was a great man. He, was, he, was, he had patience and Richard was really the guy who helped me in this difficult situation. He supported me. And everything what I know, I learned from Richard and to get this appreciation. And if this would be your life purpose, or this is actually your life purpose. And when you look back into your life and, um, and uh, you, you see many people that you support, that you support on their path, then there's a, a kind of satisfaction in, on a soul level. And then you say, okay, uh, I had a good life and uh, I, I share my values with other people and they carry on this value. So this is something uh, that uh, yeah, makes your heart singing when you can share the values and give this further to the next generation, to your sons, or, but as well uh, in a professional level and not just in a, in a private level. This would be the best case scenario and to get for that the appreciation serving with love serving other people being seen as a man who shares value and in and, and integrity very important word integrity that um, you this what you preach you preach water and you drink water and not preaching water and drinking wine so you want to be an example for other person that that um that they look up to you in a way, okay, he has integrity. So keeping the integrity is uh, then is challenged when you get connected with the emotional part. How much do I keep the integrity to myself or I give up my integrity for love because I care the other person too much. So this can be sometimes um, yeah, a struggle. Like Brent, he told, how much do I go for my wish and how much do I go for the wishes from others? So having the integrity, this is um, for you personal thing that is in your heart can be challenged, especially when you get in relationship. 
and not to to try to make right for everybody around you and otherwise then you can lose yourself because yeah you want to make right for everybody and then you you lose yourself so this is important to 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 have in your eye to be conscious to become then the man uh, who serves other people in the growth process and sharing new experience and new values in the world and being seen for that this is something or this is actually your life purpose which means I would love for you to be a father and, you know, be able to pass on the generations. And I wouldn't doubt for a second, though, I'm just guessing, but I wouldn't doubt a second that you or your fingerprints would match your father with that. It's almost like you're passing the baton. Okay. Any questions there, Rich? I uh, know. No, that was great. Very informative. And I uh, definitely see it like that. So. Do you have something that you go in this direction that you can be uh, like a father for other persons? Yeah, actually. So um, uh, I'm, I'm a firefighter. So I've been not only a student getting into it, but also as I learn and become a little bit more knowledgeable in the skills that I've learned from others, I've taught a lot of people along the way just in this last year. So, and that's something that has provided a lot of, uh, value to me because it, it's made me feel good that I can help other people and they seem super appreciative and um, you know just just thankful that I'm there so yeah when you have then later the, the the stripe and then you are the one who teaches all the other and you can share the experience this is uh, really fulfilling in your life it is yes and being in service for them was there a spiritual line on Richards that I saw? No, I took it out. That was an accident. Okay. There may be actually some goodness there, but it's it's not strong enough for me to talk about. Okay, got it. Yeah. So that's a that's a good soldier right there. <laughs> Fuck yeah. yeah. Also, gentlemen, I ha I have about uh, I don't have too much time left. Do um, how much how much longer do you think we need? There's well, we could easily go. Do you have do you have to jump to a, a meeting in seven minutes? Because we have we can easily go another 12, 40 minutes on you guys. Okay. Um can maybe we can we do 20 more minutes? Is that okay? Yeah, I let's can, go I 10 minutes each. Oh, awesome. All right. So let's uh get the ball rolling there, Brent Bruning. Uh <laughs> we already have a, a sense of where this is gonna go already, but we we look at uh, the power struggle here. We look at the family ex expectations. We have an incredible Mars. We have a, a nice straight uh, line, but there's a bit of a bubble underneath the ring finger. And that's been a, a back to what Pascal was saying is, I'm worrying a little bit about how, if I really am show all my cards, about how I really feel. Are you guys going to throw tomatoes at me? Mm. So there's a little bit of uh, uh, wrestling in James to really go, you know what? I If I really tell you what I really feel, you guys are going to, you know, throw, criticize. I want, I'm, a, I'm an easygoing guy and I want things to be very nice, but, uh, and this even gets a little crooked here. So, uh, ultimately it's wrestling a little bit with, uh, acceptance sometimes, but when we look at the fingerprint combination, there's a good news strategy here, which is if you do decide to go into this work of transformation, then what you're going to have is even a bigger, uh, uh, Empower, a need for empowerment because you come with a greater cost. So there's a, a I've seen people really break through and learn how and teach people how to set good boundaries and be uh, open and have these type of crucial conversations and open the conversations through the uh, through the family to really talk about issues that other people are like, yeah, we're fine. Okay, no, we're going in a deeper way because he's working and opening that area. 
He has super creativi uh, creativity. And he also has what we say is this need for challenges, physical challenges, right? So while Richard is, uh, is, is going into um, the fire uh, fighter here, I'd see somebody who has got a lot more uh, uh, power to just hold together an organization and, and be uh, much greater in being able to uh, carry the weight of the organization because the hand's a little bit wider. So that's why we find people like Donald Trump going into these type of positions and uh, having more political power. But you don't you wrestle with the politics. That's a problem. Uh, uh, and so you're just a, a good guy who can be there and support other people. And you have a very strong entrepreneurial uh, uh, energy. And you have what this is called a Janis Joplin tip. You got a lot of crazy creative ideas all the time. And, and you're constantly wanting to open many, many ideas. So I, I think there's a restlessness there, a lot of rest, restlessness there. And in a relationship, I see you being very true and loyal. Pascal? Yes, and uh, what is important at the end that you can be free in whatever you do. It doesn't matter that you don't like to have limitation in one way that people tell you you have to do this now in red but you want to do it in yellow so you need to have this freedom in in anything what you are doing that it's the main principle of the ring finger and the power stuff where brent was talking so by aiming and keeping keeping the line and focusing on what you want and um yeah, and not going into compromise for uh, just being the guy, compromising for being loved, and uh, then you give up your color. So keep on going and expressing your color, even some people maybe don't love you anymore or less. So this is the main, it's really important for your freedom is the, the free expression and uh, and actually uh, uh, loving life, loving, uh, loving yourself in whatever you do and, uh, and have actually a lot of fun and joy in your life. So I call mm. this also the surfer uh, being just, a, it's not about money or whatever, you can have that, but at the end you're happy when you can have free time for yourself and express and do what you have, what you like to do and have fun with it. So there's loyalty here, but we're not getting the same thing that we have with Richard. Having a more fun, freedom, yeah. loving guy. And let's switch over since we're running out of time over to uh, uh, any point. Can we have some feedback there, uh, James? Yeah, I mean, it uh, sounded extraordinary first off. Thank you. And second, I mean, a few things. So. I feel like I do have, you were talking about polarizing with Richard's hand. I thought you were talking about mine because I feel like that was describing me, but I know you said his was similar to mine in that way. Um, so definitely me on that end. I think I do have a psychological pendulum and I do endeavor into um, situations, even if I know it really for the learning aspect of them. I think coming out with just discernment and fortitude, even if it's going to be something negative going into it. So thank you. You're welcome. Uh, also, you know, the, your pinky is uh, just a little bit low set here, uh, just a little bit. So it's just a, it, it brings more of an issue around crucial conversations. And this is a hand that powers through. Uh, you have a very powerful hand. You, know, so you power through things, right? And, and that means that maybe you need to, you know, negotiate a little bit more here and speak up for where it's not working for you rather than powering through. So look, you know, have a look there. Uh, okay, and now let's let's talk about the professor here. Pascal, I've been talking. Why don't you talk? You're you're really good at these type of uh, of a, a advanced combinations, and we do have a definite advanced combination. Uh, well. Um... You know that it says so. I see now first that uh, actually you can add the left the left Mercury as well to the lesson in one yeah, way or the other. 
So uh, actually, uh, congratulations uh, uh, to Brian that uh, because we see what he's actually doing. And uh, this is uh, the reverse spiritual teacher and uh, to help people again um, in their growth process. But what is important there is uh, uh, not falling into the trap of perfectionism and to make to be self to be yourself uh, in a way um, to like to have the ex expectation to walk on water and uh, can you also be a spiritual teacher who has mistakes and not being expecting from yourself that you're able to walk on water so uh, hi uh, because uh, yeah, you human, everybody are human and have mistakes and they don't have to be perfect. And they have like having a little bit wabi-sabi. I don't know if you understand this wabi-sabi thinking that sometimes- uh, it's part of golden repair. Yeah, sometimes it's something more beautiful when they, they when there is defect and when it's not perfect. So there is a, a high expectation on yourself and to be never satisfied. Mm -hmm. It would be the negative part, and the positive part is you still can be a, a spiritual teacher even if you have some mistakes and you don't you're not able to walk on water, and uh, and we just on a journey in this lifetime, and uh, and it's good and um, and uh, to be happy where you are, but still growing, growing. But uh, this part can be within you that is never really satisfied because it's so longing more and more and more. So being this high, um, yeah, having sometimes very high values that maybe you, nobody can reach to it. Mm -hmm. And then it's an ideal that, uh, that uh, can lead to a kind of uh, frustration because uh, you still can't walk on water. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, it's okay. That's an interesting way to tie it in. It's like <clears throat> I have high ideals for humanity and simultaneously for myself, and I am frustrated by my own ability not to walk on water and also frustrated by humanity not living yeah. up to it. Then yeah, you, that's, that really resonates deeply. Yeah, and then you can be too frustrated and to accept that that humans are full of mistakes and whatever and uh and to you suffer on that when you see why you don't understand it. It can be so easy. Come on, grow, grow. And people ignore it. And this is a pain within you that it's not easy. But this pain brings you walk, is a good pain that he that makes you go on and on and on. But mm. don't try to avoid this pain and make this pain away. Mm, okay. It'll actually work in the reverse, that the more that you uh, can hold the pain and be authentic with the pain and just face the pain and say, I got pain and we can see it on your face and you're just in that place, you actually get more trust and you begin seen as a mentor because everyone has pain, right? So they're able to resonate on a, on a, a much more richer uh, version than just a mental uh, area. And when mm -hmm. they see that, then they start to see, wow, you then start to work in the development of a mentor, of a spiritual. But this area right here is now wanting to build something up and govern and manifest. So the nickname for that we've given this is the shaman. Mm -hmm. Not to blow your head up because we're trying to get you to not walk on water. We're trying yeah, to get you to, <laughs> yeah, but it's through that pain that you're able to do that, right? So by connecting to it, but when you have this need for perfection and working on yourself endlessly, in a, you can imagine what it would be like if in the positive, you are uh, connecting as a spiritual mentor and you can manifest a thousand projects through love. Mm -hmm. And in the negative, mm -hmm. you're constantly uh, wrestling with the distrust in the relationship as you find yourself detached and more in love with the idea and working on yourself more and then finding yourself in a codependent relationship sometimes and not being able to uh, really stand uh, in your power 
and finding that she's running roughshod over you as you, you're wondering, am I worthy for love in this? Or, and, and, and feeling a little bit abused sometimes by the lack of connection and you need a lot of it. So here's a very advanced combination because we said earlier, when you have all these waves, you're in a love story, whether you like it or not, and you need to have a lot of touch and a communication and intimacy with every single person around you. And you got two tenant arches here. This is an anxious energy, an exciting energy that wants to transcend and be a mentor. And so that's emotional risk all the time. And you get off of it. If you don't have that emotional risk, then you're going to go create the emotional risk, create an argument just because you're not, things aren't in a place of intensity or try to expand boundaries because you have, you need that intensity. And when you find that middle place, what you're really getting is even more manifestation and you're able to hold and build a big project together. But mm -hmm. if you go into the guilty and then the distrust and people don't think it's real and and, you know, it's another Cinderella story and what you're doing is weird and you're trying to walk on water, you're not holding your power, then you'll start to feel like um, the dis there's a growing distrust and you'll start to even fail and you'll want to go to the next project and then the next project and then the next project. So mm -hmm. this is a pattern just it keeps running and running and running. And what a different story we have here from the other twins, huh? And mm -hmm. the other thing that I really want to uh, uh, commend you for is a look at this square thumb. That's a, that's a really square thumb. It's a guy who's really good at understanding systems and seeing the system of it. You would learn hand analysis in no time and be mm -hmm. able to uh, organize that and link that to other systems and be able to uh, uh, then move that into the shamanic world of energy and meditation and how to break through. So there's a, there, there's a lot of talents here that, uh, and of course you have the traveler's foot too, right? Left, right. It needs to go out and see the world. So in, in regards to codependency, just cause that's more of like the immediate thing that I'm experiencing right now. Um, What's the best way to communicate the depth of what I need while still staying in that balance? Like, is it important for me to get what I need or is it more important for me to fulfill my own needs so I can manifest and be more in my power? Okay, that's a very complicated uh, 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 answer that I would have to give there. First off, it's vital, and this goes for all three of you guys. It's mm -hmm. vital that you talk this and speak the truth about what's happening emotionally with you. If I'm angry, I'm angry. If I'm guilty, I'm guilty. If I'm having a crappy day, I'm having a crappy day. And God forbid, I tell you that how I actually feel. God forbid that I go back to the area where you piss me off. And even though I'm still hard harboring difficulty about something you did nine months ago, I still am not over it. I would like to be able to have a conversation to tell you how I actually feel. Mm -hmm. When you get to that level, that crucial conversation starts to make major breakthroughs in there because you're giving the freedom. The second piece is that you come from a place of goodwill all the time here. You're not, you're not in any victim position by telling somebody that I'm having this experience. And by with your goodwill, you're able to face anybody's shadow. Like we say in Texas, you can say anything, you know, you're, you're overweight, God bless your heart, right? You can do anything from a good place. So you even start, you have to come from in a good intention that what you're saying, it, you can never say the wrong thing to the right person. And so okay. that's, that's step two. And then step three, you listen. You have a high probability of having my, even narcissistic people coming into your life with this combination who would then mm -hmm. boss you around where you don't, you don't get to set a good, healthy boundary. And the best thing that you can do is you'll actually get more closest telling them, I need my space now. Thank you. I have my mm -hmm. office here. I got two kids and I got a Romanian wife with mm -hmm. who's, who's got, he's constantly, at, you know, Romanian invading space. I have to set those boundaries 
And because I do that, we get a closer relationship. If I don't, then I hate my relationship. So it really means that I have to have regular co connectional rituals of saying, this is what's working, like a profession, like, and have a professional relationship going, this is what's working, this is what's not working, and, and not try to overanalyze it and just say, this is what my approach, let's have, you know, let's do something on Wednesday, right? And then the rest of the time, let's be easy. So it's really having a vision and being able to command your vision and your power and saying, this is what I want. And this week, I don't want to be with you. That's fine. That's what my mood is telling me. Or this time I do. Mm, got it. Okay. That's great. Yeah. Instead of like just being honest with what's present and having those conversations and seeing where those go, instead of even worrying about being codependent, just acknowledging that there might be codependency and seeing yeah. what shifted from that, honestly. Yeah, and I would be careful about those labels too, right? Even the narcissism, even though I just say narcissism, um, okay. the, those labels, when my experience is, is that when you're, we're, we're talking about your shadow sides through this whole thing mm -hmm. and calling somebody out on their shadow side doesn't really help often. And these labels like codependent or, or or narcissist, people act that way because they're in a protective frame. They're trying to protect themselves of that. But when you have a good mindset and you listen to first some qualities of what you're grateful for, and you you and one of the practices I would absolutely recommend for you, Brian, is definitely the ten gratitude a day, and mm -hmm. really staying present to that even for yourself and in those magic moments and have a ritual before you go to bed that you have all 10 and why you're grateful and what happened there all the mm -hmm. wisdom then the second thing is you can't wait for the moment you have to create it and then from that point i'll share i'll share with you uh what we go through where people in the transform transformative space to have crucial conversations and you start always with gratitude always it's not the sandwich method because I want you to be uh, articulate, but you state your, with gratitude the outcome that you want and that you, and there's a need of something that's missing and you hear how they feel about it and you listen and then take your, you're like, okay, I see how it's been for you. And now share your side and talk about the difficult situation and know and take ownership of this particular wisdom we're giving you and say, this is my wisdom. I know I'm, I'm going through this. And I, this is what my heart wants going forward this week. And that's it. Mm -hmm. And then you compare it complete or, or, or if you don't, it, then you go into the layers of the onion. Those type of conversations are not always working on yourself or working on the relationship, which you may have to be careful doing. It's more like, this is what, what would make us feel good this week. And that's it. And then mm -hmm. seal the deal saying, all right, this is what we commit going forward. And then now you're in a great story. And that's, that's what most of these guys end up having in, in the transformative hero's journey. They have to go through a crucial conversation. And it's the most unpleasant part of the entire 28 days is to be able to talk to somebody who's been pissing you off. And, but to do it from a place of compassion and goodwill for a boundary of a vision you want. Mm -hmm, mm hmm Got it. I got warm. All right. So uh, now we can have a uh, feedback. Anything you guys want to say about this? And, and do you see that this could be something that you would see valuable for the world? If you see other people that you could share this with and from the Institute of Hand Analysis and the power in your hands, you'd be willing to share it on your Instagram or, or something on your YouTube to just share what you got. That's what we want is a real authentic expression of what, how you feel. Definitely. Hey, I, I would, um, it, well, where's this, is, is this going to be recorded somewhere and we can repost it on our Instagrams or Facebooks? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I would like to, this is, I mean, amazing. I think a lot of people would enjoy uh, viewing this and also maybe doing it themselves. Great. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree. I think uh, it's very insightful and a lot of people don't, they're not aware of like the depth that goes into this and the analysis that's uh, read here. So it's, it's really good. I, I would honestly like to go deeper 
And then I would also like to, you know, when we have a clear understanding of all three of us, like see how that could affect each other in the long run of our lives to see how we could best show up for each other and understand each other in the future. Um, and like to just understand like it, my present it, presence in their life, did it affect their hands and how they manifested their behaviors throughout their, you know, throughout their human experience so far, you know, I'm so super curious. And it's funny because every little distinct thing that we have that's different from each other, it seems like that was brought up today. Hmm. So that was fascinating to me. And I, you know, I obviously didn't tell you anything about Richard or James and there's like very subtle things that make them, them from my perspective. And I feel like that was, that was really brought up. And I think even, you know, specifically James, cause you know, James, I care about you so much, dude. And we're, we're both navigating a lot of pain in our lives in this lifetime that like, to just to have the tools to be able to navigate your own unique energy because you are different than Richard and Jane and I, you know, so to be able to do the things you need to do for yourself to navigate your hero's journey. Um, and I think there's a lot of wonderful advice that was shared today on that. Well, I would invite you guys. I mean, you're all influencers. And I can give, definitely give you an influencer discount because you guys are, I, I need to bring people into this program because it's trauma releasing and uh, if you are willing to consider doing the shift, it's a powerful, powerful process of handling pain. And uh, I'm not wanting to dig up, you know, dogs that don't need to be dug up. But if you can be with it, what you're really being is that part of yourself that you always want to <clears throat> rescue, just handle it. You know, it's like my kids that come in, you know, and they're like, I got a boob. Ah! And they create a big story about it, right? I'm like, deal with it, rub some sand on it, get back in the game, right? So there's yeah. a, if I can open up the pattern in you and have you see the, and it would be really fascinating to see all three of you guys run through a shadow pattern that would take a lot of courage because I know how much you guys love each other. And you're going to be able to see the impact of such a story on each other. And then you're going to be able to break through that in more compassion. Oh, I'm starting to cry a little bit. How special would that be, guys, to do that? Yeah, a, yeah. But that takes courage, guys. It takes an incredible amount of courage. You guys got courage. You got you got Mars. What am I talking yeah. about? Okay. You got incredible. Yeah. I was going to um, say, as far as courage, I mean, that ayahuasca ceremony kind of brought the depths of everything we needed up. So we can't go any you know, further than that, right? So I'd be open to this. This would be a good integration process, too. I mean, Brent, I have, I, have no, I have no doubt that I could, you know, really blow this up to the right people via my social channels. You know, the same thing with Pascal, um, just because nobody really knows that this level of um, understanding the nervous system exists. You know, no one's taken this route, really. And I really believe that you guys are the best in the world at what you do. And I've seen a lot of different random spiritual tools out there. Right. So. Um, let's sidebar and figure out what's the best way to promote this. I'm happy to set up a car, call separately. And then, you know, whatever I can do to, if Richard and James are open to it, to possibly doing this together, the, the shift program, I'm happy to have that conversation too. I'll send you all some information. You can just look at it because I get Q&A on this stuff all the time uh, because it's, I, I'm not a trauma therapist, but I'm also uh, able to give you this blueprint and, and it, I'm, I'm able to show you it in a very compassionate way and go mm -hmm. deeper from a visual level. And if you guys just listen to this recording again and listen to what we said, and then imagine the pictures of your life where what we said came up, mm -hmm. then you're going to be able to fill out 20 or 30 images on a shadow board. And then you're going to see I'm doing it again and I'm just going to continue doing it. And it's okay. It's built in the hand. It's part of your part mm. of your construction that God wanted you to go through this. And you can accelerate that evolution just like you see people in your high school reunion. And this is this is meant to put you in the problems you're meant to have in a deeper way. Mm, amazing. There's nothing wrong with it. It's a pain you're we want you to have. So good. It's amazing. Amazing. Um, well, well, yeah, let me, let's, let's, let's do a sidebar conversation as well. And, you know, um, let me know how we can get this also, you know, this is a very unique piece of art that we created today too. So what's the yeah. best way to promote it as, as such as well? 
Well, it's been fantastic. I, I guess the best thing is I'll send you the clip, uh, uh, the raw footage of it, you know, on the link and then, and then let's see what we can do with that. All right. Maybe you can, you have some skills on your side to do something with it. I'm a hand analyst, right? Uh, I have a, um, uh, a marketing department did some really beautiful videos and I can also give it to them and see what they do with it. Cool. Yeah, I got you. Let's go. All right, guys, then it's been a session. It's been real. It's been historical. It's been amazing. And we fell in love clearly with all three of you guys. And oh. um, uh, yeah, I really have to be of uh, service to your path and your life. Pascal? Yes, it was a great time. And thank you for your openness and to be uh, on the spotlight. So uh, that's, that's, uh, totally. it's not, it's not oh, okay. normal and uh, very grateful to do that. And we hope we respected you as well. Mm, truly, truly. If you guys are ever in Los Angeles, you got a place to stay, you got a home here. Accepted. <laughs> nice to hear that. <laughs> All right, as, well all. as well in Switzerland. Ah, okay, I'll definitely take you up on that. For sure. I can already tell we'd have a lot of fun. Yeah. Sure. Anytime welcome. Oh, thank you, brothers. Okay. Well, uh, Iron, yes. Iron, I'll talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye-bye. All love, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, James. Thanks. Hey, hey, uh, Pascal, are you still there? Yeah. Okay, feedback. What do you think? Yeah, it was uh, was a nice round and. Uh...